I want to share some exciting good news that took place over the last week. First of all, for those who are a part of InFocus Church, we were able to join together and do our serve week here in our community. We love the fact that we could come together on this particular week and just serve those around us with the love of Christ. No strings attached. So I love the opportunity to be able to do that. Secondly, we sent our youth mission team off this past weekend to Memphis, Tennessee to be able to serve that community there and a local church there as well. Look forward to what that is going to mean for them in their lives and also for us as a church. And then finally, for those who were here this past Sunday, we had our uh, toy drive for our Christmas giveaway where we're basically giving away gifts to families that are in need and every single one of the gifts that we had out there were taken. So I thank you for responding that way. Now, why do I mention this? Well, in a time and a season and a climate that is divisive and there's a lot of angst, I'm grateful for God's grace that he would allow us the opportunity to be able to serve in such a way that we're following in the footsteps of Jesus, who himself said, I came, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And I love that we were able to follow him in doing that in a week that was marked by everything but serving and loving one another. Now, the upside down kingdom has never been popular, but it has always been powerful. And at a time where people need to see Jesus the most, it is time for us to be like Jesus the most. And when I say the kingdom of God and the kingdom of of Jesus, his, his lordship is something that is power under and not power over, the type of power that I'm talking about is powerful in a spiritual way, not in a political or government or army sort of way, like the power to make people feel valued, loved, welcomed, to feel seen by God, the power to empathize and listen to people and and hear where they are and, and be able to minister to them, the power to bring healing and freedom and hope to those that are hopeless, the power to bring the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ to point people to Jesus so that they can have an abundant life now and an eternal life forever. That's the power that I'm talking about. And the only way that we bring that into the lives of those around us and into our communities is by following in the footsteps of our humble king. And in humility, we embody and we live out the kingdom of God. Now, on the flip side of humility is what I have seen a lot of this past week, this past election week, that it's nothing like Jesus. And it's hypocrisy. There's been a lot of hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is pretending to be something or someone that we're not. Hypocrisy idiomatically, as I taught this past Sunday at church, is means two-faced, two-tongued, two-hearted. Now, growing up, I was a comic book kid. I still like comic books. I'm more of a Marvel guy now. But as a kid, I would take any comic book that I could get my hands on at the cheapest price point. Uh, So I would take any comic book. One of the particular ones that I enjoyed was Batman. Now, Batman has an arch enemy and he has quite a few, but one of them is called Two-Face. Two-Face had literally two faces. So on one side of his face, he looked normal from a profile. And on the other side, his profile looked grotesque, hideous, deformed. And he had two personalities, the normal one and the grotesque one. The one that would treat people normally and kind, the one that would treat people maniacally and murderously. And so the way he decided how he was going to respond in any given situation was to flip a coin. And if it landed on heads or tails was dependent upon whether he responded in whatever situation it was, normally and like a kind human being, or maniacally and like a murderous villain. Now, as Christians, we do not have the opportunity, nor should we take this thought into our lives of flipping a coin as to how we're going to respond into situations. That's hypocrisy. We can't be two-faced, two-tongued, and two-hearted. So when we live a life of hypocrisy, it is spiritual destruction. And what I mean by that, that spiritual destruction is trifold. 
We are deceived as the hypocrite. We are damaging the unbeliever and we're dishonoring to God. That's the type of spiritual destruction that takes place in the life of one who is hypocritical. Now, I believe that our hypocrisy is rooted in self-righteousness and idolatry. And the reason hypocrisy flows out of idolatry like dirty water out of a faucet is this. On one side, we say we love God and we want to follow him. But on the flip side, we do something else that dishonors God, that damages unbelievers, and that deceives ourselves. We have another face, another tongue, another heart that is towards someone or something else. Someone or something else that sits on the throne of our lives. So this past week, I believe it was the idol of politics. Now, it worked itself out in Christians proving that our political ideologies or our political candidates are more important than our brothers and sisters in Christ or more important to any onlooker in our lives publicly or wherever that may be. And even most importantly, most significantly, more important than God himself. And here's where we're deceived. Here's where we're damaging others. And here's where we're dishonoring God. How about this? And what I would like to say is I want to give some examples of how this happens. And maybe even this week, the amount of promoting and posting for our political leanings, outnumbering our promoting and posting of our identities in Christ. Do we share our faith? in a sovereign God and a loving Savior more than we share our fear about where our country is headed if this particular candidate does or does not get elected. Let me also just share some examples of hypocrisy that I have seen and I've witnessed. Now, let me just say this. Listen to me. I do this not to make you mad, not to stir something up, not to sow any type of divisiveness in your heart. And if you're already mad or stirred up, then it won't matter because that's where you are already. So it won't matter what I say at this point. But I do this as a leader, and I'm going to read them. So I do this as a leader and as a pastor in order that you might have a different perspective, hopefully, and honestly see if God is speaking to your heart about any hypocrisy or any idolatry that you may have in your own life that you cannot see. We all have blind spots. So please listen to me now with a clear heart and a clear mind and see if you're choosing hypocrisy over humility, a love for something other than God and people the way God loves us. Now, I want to compare things that I hear while addressing racial injustice and our desire to be a church marked by unity and diversity versus what I hear about a presidential election. First of all, here's where I'm saying, are we being hypocritical? I hear this as it relates to racial injustice. We need to get back to just preaching the gospel. Flip a coin. Flip side. We need to have a special prayer meeting for our election and our president. This is electoral injustice, and it has to be addressed. This would be a black eye on our country if we allow the injustice to continue in our political system. So do we address racial injustice that Jesus made clear that we must address, or government injustice which Jesus clearly had to suffer through himself? We need to quit being divisive with all this race stuff. Flip side, it's time to fight and go to war for what is right. Which is more divisive, biblical unity through diversity or political partisanship and wars for what we believe is right? This is a false narrative from the media. Racism is not rampant or systemic. It's not a problem in 2020. Flip side. This is rampant and systemic voter fraud and voter suppression. In this case, I guess the media is still spreading a false narrative, but this time it is not by pointing out something that one side believes is rampant and systemic, and that's voter fraud. Maybe there are a few bad apples out there, but it's an exception, not the norm. Flip side. 
We can't afford to have any bad apples at the polls. We must count every legal vote, and every legal vote counts. Does every life count? The truth is, apart from Christ, we are all prone to all kinds of terrible things. All of us. We're all prone to racism. We're all prone to cheat, voter fraud, stealing, murdering in our hearts and in our lives. We are prone to these things if we are not serving and following Jesus Christ. We must be people of the cross. Here is my exhortation. I'm imploring us. We must be people of the cross. We must live as citizens of heaven first. And when we live as if Jesus is Lord of our lives, if we live as those who love people, serve people, care about people, care for people, the kingdom of God is established on earth as it is in heaven. It's not something we build. It's something that we live. So I'm asking you to let humility, kindness, love, and service mark your life today. God wants your face not to be two-faced, but to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to keep your eyes fixed on him. God wants your tongue to speak truth and to build up one another while it's still called today. That things that come out of our mouth are things that are pleasing to God. And God wants your heart to be an undivided heart, a heart that knows and bears his name to the one who is Lord over all and is in control of all things. This is who God has called us to be as his people. And I encourage you to walk in humility, not hypocrisy. We're all hypocrites that are being sanctified. So allow God to sanctify you in every area that is not glorifying him and loving others as Christ loved us first. 